guys, Tony here, and welcome back to another room tour. I'm excited for this one as I share a fellow content creator and home theater enthusiast room who you may know as Cable Guy Dan. I met Dan earlier this year after commenting on one of his videos, and he's been part of my Discord server, which, by the way, just reached 1,000 members. So thank you to everyone who has become part of the growing Discord community. I will have links in the description to that as well. I also want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and I have a little surprise for Dan later in the video all made possible by Squarespace, which is an online website building platform perfect for creating an online store, a portfolio website, or basically anything you like. So check out the links in the description or go to squarespace.com forward slash build montage to get 10% off your first purchase. Now, before we get into the tour and hear from Dan, I wanted to mention that these tours do take quite a bit of time to make, especially as most of the rooms I showcase on the channel are from overseas. And as such, when we had started the tour, we had already put in quite a bit of time to the production and Dan ended up getting some brand new speakers. So just bear that in mind, some of the footage you see will have his new speakers due to the additional footage that I needed to complete the tour. So Dan has done something very cool, which is to convert a single car garage into an awesome home cinema, which he enjoys with his wife and three kids. Although similar to me, he finds that it's usually just him and his wife in there minus the kids. Dan lives just outside of London and has a huge passion for Star Wars Stormtroopers and actually builds his own armor and props and was able to take part in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker premiere in London wearing his armor. I will leave links to Dan's YouTube channel in the description and I would encourage you all to go and take a look. But for now, sit back, relax and let's get Dan to take us through his garage home theater. Well, we bought the house around six years ago and at the time this was just a standard single garage but it was in pretty bad condition so the roof had slight holes in it so you could actually see out through to the to the daylight it was an asbestos roof which is terrible as well and it was just a bit of a mess so we both decided we didn't really want space for the car so we discussed maybe a playroom slash cinema room well we ended up with a full-on cinema room there's, there's no playroom really The room itself is about 2.2 meters in width by four and a half meters in length and the ceiling heights are a maximum of about 2.6 meters. It slopes up from the back of the room to the front. So the builders essentially did all the main work in here. They did the stud walls, new floor, new roof, because of course that was falling apart. And they did everything up until plastering, just essentially based on the, the scale drawings that I'd done to make sure we still kept room at the back there for a utility room as well, that was key. So once they'd done the plastering, they then left off and I carried on as a DIY project. So things like the dropped ceiling, the projector housing, essentially any woodwork or decorating that you see in here was then done by me as a DIY project, which I really, really enjoyed. In terms of the look of the room, we didn't really have an exact theme for the room, but just wanted a dark room for cinema usage, but not too dark because we can still use it in the day. You can put the electric blinds up and then you can have a nice lot of light coming in. So if you want to use it as a day room, just come and sit and chill out, you can still do that. But the room is still pretty dark throughout. We've got some quite nice accent lighting around the dropped ceiling. So again, that was something that I designed myself to build a dropped ceiling, put the LED lighting above it, and then just have that essentially glowing around the, the ring of the dropped ceiling. It's essentially just a wooden construction, but overall when the lights are on, it looks pretty cool. There's 10 LED down lights as well in the dropped ceiling. So that gives us control for the main lighting, obviously when you want to walk in and out. They are dimmable and they're actually controlled by the Harmony remote. So I've programmed the lighting in here to be controlled by the channel up and down buttons on the Harmony Ultimate remote. So that's really cool. If you want to get up during the film, just press channel up and the lights will come on, see your way out and then you can come back in channel down and the lights will all go off. Uh, the seating that we've got is two-seater recliners. They're not dedicated cinema chairs, but they are quite comfortable. 
They do have the recline and they fitted into the size of the room. Again, it's not a huge room, so size has always been a bit of a constraint. And also we do have a little bit of sort of movie memorabilia sort of. We've got some Disney figurines around that I've collected over the years. Ones that are quite rare, they don't really sell them anymore. And also a few Stormtrooper helmets. So I've been building Stormtroopers uh, since about 2017. So there's usually at least one or two either fully built or half built Stormtrooper helmets around the room. But otherwise it is quite simple. As I say, just simple life designed really so we can be immersed when we're watching movies. The visuals in here are from an Epson TW7200 1080p projector. It's good quality, it had very good reviews when it was launched quite a few years back and that's the main reason I went for it. It's got a very nat natural image which I really enjoy, even things like bulb life. I've only just replaced the bulb after about six years and the bulb was still actually going. But image quality wise it's very very good. That is actually connected to a motorized electronic drop down screen. So it's got a 12 volt trigger output that goes to the screen so as soon as the projector projector fires up we then have the screen drop down automatically into position that's a 92 inch 16 by 9 sapphire screen so it's not particularly high end but it just does the job well for the room here and of course then when you switch the projector off the screen just disappears again into the custom housing that I built just to hide that projector screen away so again 1080p which is is fine in here 92 inch and we really enjoy that it's a good quality projector guys as I mentioned at the beginning of this video it is sponsored by Squarespace and I thought it would be a cool idea to build a mini website for Dan which showcases his room and even has an online store if he decides he wants to sell his props and make a few bucks. Squarespace has a ton of features that made it really easy with a wide range of templates and layouts to choose from so it was really easy to make the homepage and the image gallery with a few simple clicks which is really nice. What I really like about Squarespace is that anyone can do it and you can even register your new domain name with them as well which means you can get up and running really fast. So if you're in the market for a new website, why not check out the links in the description or go to squarespace.com forward slash build montage to get 10% off your first purchase. At the bottom of the rack, we've got the Yamaha P5000S power amplifier. So that's powering the two Bowers & Wilkins ASW610 subs at the back of the room. Above that, you've got the Emotiva Basics A3. That's now powering the front left, center, and right channels. And that's been a really nice improvement in terms of audio quality. Above that, you've got the Marantz SR7011 AVR. And this is by far the best AVR that I've had so far. Paired with the Emotiva, that's taken things to another level as well. You've then got a thermostatically controlled fan system them. That's dragging heat away from the Marantz AVR. The Marantz I do find gets quite warm so this fan system kicks in at a certain temperature. You just tell it when to kick in and that will pull the heat away from the AVR. Next is a CYP 4x6 matrix. So all of the HDMI inputs from the sources come into this matrix and then you can route those to different rooms, different zones. So this unit has two local HDMI outputs one of which runs to the AVR, so that's giving us the video and audio in the cinema room. And then it has four HD base T outputs, so basically outputs over cat cable. So you can then feed four additional zones up to around 60 meters away via cat cable to relevant receivers. So that is great, really nice for video switching and audio switching. And as I say, all of the sources go directly into this matrix. Next, we've got a Panasonic Blu-ray player, the DMP BDT310. So it is a 3D capable Blu-ray player. It's quite old now. It's 1080p. The projector in here is only 1080p as well. So at the moment, that's fine just as a Blu-ray source playback. Next, we've got the Xbox One S and an old Generation 2 Apple TV, I believe. We very rarely use Apple TV, almost never, in fact. You've then got a NAD CD player which is the C545BEE so if I want to listen to higher quality audio then I will actually dig out a proper CD and have a proper listen so that gets used just for occasional two channel listening of course. Next up we've got a dedicated DAC that's the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic so both the CD player and one of the Sonos units 
go directly into the DAC, do all of the digital to analog conversion, just to try and maintain the highest quality possible. On the right, you've got the Harmony Hub, that's running with the Harmony Ultimate Remote Control. And at the back there, you've got a Zizel Network Switch, just to give us a bit more control over the switching side of things. And for audio, we've got a Sonos Bridge, just to give us the, obviously the, the Wi-Fi capability. And then you've got the Sonos Connect, which is then feeding straight into this room. So again, if I want to listen to music through Sonos, and then obviously through down to the AVR. Above all of that is then the Epson TW7200. So again, that makes things easier for cabling because you just run an HDMI cable to it. That's got the 12 volt trigger output on the back and that gives us all the visuals in the cinema room. For the speakers in the room, it's mostly Bowers and Wilkins. We're running a 7.1 or 7.4.4 system, depending on how you count the subs. But that's then uh, seven bed layers, of course, two overhead speakers and four subwoofers. So at the front of the room, left and right, you've got the Bowers and Wilkins 684S1 towers. For the center channel, you've got the HTM62 S1. They're all series one for these. Uh, for the side surround, you've got the DS3 dipole speakers. And due to the size of the room, I do actually run them in dipole. I know it's not recommended for Atmos, but given how narrow the room is, that does seem to work slightly better for our room size. At the back, you've then got the surround rear or surround back, which are a pair of Bowers and Wilkins M1. And then in the ceiling, we've got four overhead speakers, uh, two in front, two behind, and those are then the CCM665. All of those Bowers and Wilkins speakers are from a similar range and designed to have similar sound performance, uh, tonal sound. So again, that's why I went for those to try and get a nice even sound from any position in the room. In terms of bass, we've got four subwoofers running. So at the front of the room, you've got two 12 inch ported subs. Those are the XTZ 12.17 subs. I believe each one has a 700 watt RMS amplifier built in. And at the back of the room, you've then got a pair of Bowers and Wilkins ASW 610 subwoofers. They used to be active, but uh, they were quite old, finally stopped working. So rather than throw them away, I did a DIY job and made them into passive subs. So those are now running at the back of the room as well. So there's been a few upgrades to the room recently, obviously over six years, it's gradually upgrading anyway, but there are a few things that I really wanted to get finished off. So one thing was the motorized blind at the front of the room. It never had anything at the sides to really block out the edge light. So you bring the blind down, but you'd still have this halo of light around the edge. I finally did some work on that, built a frame out of wood just to basically cover up the front of it and then used actually some uh, foam to then create a sort of channel for the blind to fit into. So again, I'll get a much better blackout in broad daylight, which is brilliant. I also repositioned the rear speakers. They were a lot narrower before. They were much closer together at the back of the room due to the room layout. But I finally thought, no, I'm not gonna compromise anymore. So I've moved them out further and they now match much better with the Dolby specifications for Atmos, for example, for a 7.1 channel. So that's been really good. But the biggest upgrade recently has been the Mini DSP 2x4 HD. That to properly calibrate the four subs in here to work as they do now. It's just absolutely, it's a no brainer. It's so good for multiple subs. The results speak for themselves when I've done it with REW and honestly, it's really brought them together. So the bass response in here, as I say, Mini DSP has really turned that around so much more solid in terms of the bass performance now in this room. Those are the main upgrades that I've done to the room recently. Well, it's just the odd little bit of decorating here and there. In terms of future upgrades, I've actually got some Arundel sound speakers, which are on their way to me. And I'm very excited about those. So those will be replacing my seven bed layer speakers. So that's a really exciting thing. I'm waiting for those to arrive. And also at some point, I would really like to move to an acoustically transparent screen and then have my speakers actually behind that. Might be a bit of an issue with the size of my room. That's pretty much why I've not done it so far. But ideally for me, three identical speakers behind an acoustically transparent screen, that's the way to do it. I've got the identical speakers on the way. The acoustically transparent screen would be the next big step after that. So all that tech talk, you can project uh, the speakers, but it doesn't mean anything unless it's a good experience. So for me, we absolutely love this room. The, especially going to Atmos, it's now just so immersive, whether that's the things like Netflix, 
which obviously has a lot of Atmos content, whether it's watching big budget movies, all of it, just love it. Um, it's so nice that the room now can be a lot darker, so you can just sit comfortably and then really enjoy that immersive experience. The 92 inch screen in here is just the right size. We sit about 2.8 meters away. So 92 inch screen is good. In fact, it's the maximum we could get in here, but it is immersive. And as I say, just the experience in here is, is really enjoyable. So for me, grab some pick -a mix put on a good movie or a good program on Netflix, and away we go. So guys, what did you think of Dan's Garage Home Theatre? Make sure you show him some love by smashing that like button and head down to the comments section and leave any questions for Dan as he will be sure to answer them. I have links in the description to most of the items showcased in the video, so make sure you check them out if you're interested. I'd also like to thank Dan for taking part of the video and for all of his work in producing the footage that I needed and answering all of my questions. It's been awesome getting to know you better and thank you again for becoming part of the Build Montage Tour family. If you're not already and would like to join the growing community, you can hit the subscribe button right now, as well as click the join button if you'd like to show your support to the channel. I have more room tours coming, as well as some very cool product reviews. And I'd like to thank you all for watching and making it this far. But that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.